Hey everyone, I am Robin the Coffee Bitch. This is Stewie, my sidekick sloth. And today we have a real question from a real client. Not that the others are fake questions, but you know what I mean. This is hot off the virtual presses. Hot off the virtual pixels? I, I, I don't even know. Anyway, so let me give you some context. My, my client is a research services company. I'll leave it vague like that. And last year, my web designer and I did a fresh new website for them and came out really, really great. And they came back to me at the beginning of this year and they're like, hey, we're thinking of doing um, an email newsletter. I'm like, great, that's a great idea. They want to stay in front of their current clients, past clients, colleagues, put out news. They want to keep their name on people's radar so that when someone needs their research services, and it's a very niche industry, they're not looking for a ton of leads from their website. So when we did their website back in 2022, that was one of the things we talked about. It was, you know, are they looking for leads from their website? It's obviously nice if you get leads from your website, but their main goal with their website is to serve as kind of like social proof. If someone hears about their name or they're referred, they go to this really nice looking site and it looks great, it reads well, all that sort of good stuff, great. It's usually to help close the deal rather than to bring in someone. But we optimize the site for good keyword phrases knowing that over time, you know, maybe they'll get a lead or two that turns into business. Okay, so the email newsletter makes a lot of sense. They've been around for I think over well over a decade. So they have a good roster of past clients, current clients, colleagues, again, opted in, you know, people who are familiar with their name. Here was the question that my client asked. She's been doing some reading, which is good about marketing. And now her question is, you know, she's reading about the benefits of blogging. And she said, you know, are there advantages to doing blog posts rather than an email newsletter? Um, and it's a great question. Email newsletter versus blogging, which should you do? Like so many things in marketing land, it's never an either or situation. Like you don't have to do one or the other. Um, you can, you could just do one, you could do both. The way you need to think about things, and the reason why I'm bringing this up in this video for copywriting is that if you are a copywriter and you're guiding clients, you can be a really valuable asset. Don't just do the writing, what you're assigned and don't give feedback. Provide, provide insight. Like if someone, a client is going down a road or a path that you don't think is going to be beneficial to them, you know, bring it up di diplomatically. Be like, hey, have you thought of doing this? Or maybe this might not be the best way to go about this. Maybe try this instead. So I always appreciate it when clients ask for my insight because I think that's one of the things that I bring to the table in addition to writing chops is, you know, my take. So here is my take on newsletters versus blogging. So an email newsletter, and the reason why I'm saying newsletter, because that's a key word, email marketing in general is a little different. So I think of email marketing as the big umbrella category, and then an email newsletter is underneath that. But your other email marketing is more salesy. So we'll talk about that in another video. Let's just talk about an email newsletter. It's exactly as it sounds. It's, it's delivering news. It's delivering information about your company, um, updates, maybe new clients that the company's landed, maybe a big project that's been finished that you can share pictures of or video, maybe it's some new hires, maybe it's some testimonials, maybe it's like interesting articles or some sort of human nature sort of piece about maybe a cool thing that one of your employees is doing. A newsletter, it's newsy, right? And anyone who's on that newsletter list should be have opted in, like they should know who you are. You never want to spam people. That's a whole different topic. So that's what an email newsletter is. And the reason why you send it is to keep top of mind. It's to stay in front of people so that, you know, they remember your name, that they remember that you're out there, that you're still open for business. I think a quarterly newsletter is like the perfect cadence for this particular company. It's not the type of business that needs to send something out monthly, but if every quarter they're sending out the, hey, you know, Here's what latest with us. Here's some cool stuff that we've been reading about our industry. Here's, you know, a case study about some work we've done. That's, you know, that's the sort of stuff. It's just the right cadence, the right amount of information. That way, if someone on the list, whether it's a current client, a past client, a colleague, at some point needs research services, hopefully this company will bubble right to the top. Perfect. Okay. Email newsletter. Now let's talk about blogging. So you look so serious. Um, okay. Blogging. We all know what blogs are. 
So when businesses blog, what they're trying to do is bring in targeted traffic to their site, searchers who are looking for something that's relevant to the business. Like, you know, if the business sells a widget, let's just use the, the, the classic widget example, and someone's doing a search on the type of widgets that this business sells, they want to capture some of that traffic. So a lot of times we talk about the sales funnel. So people at the top of the sales funnel are not ready to buy it. They're just in the research phase. They're thinking about it. They kind of have a problem. They ha kind of have an itch. They kind of know that they need to do something. They start looking for information. Maybe they look for a provider. They're looking for information about a service. They're reading reviews. They're doing their due diligence. They're turning to the Googles and they're putting in their search terms. And maybe with some luck and with some well-written content, a blog post for the business shows up and they go to it and they read it and maybe they stick around, they read some more blog posts and they're like, wow, these guys really know what they're talking about. Hey, I'm gonna follow them on social media or maybe I'll sign up for their, their email newsletter or maybe I'll download a piece of content and I'm gonna be getting more salesy emails as follow-up email marketing. That's kind of what blogging is about. You're trying to capture that traffic that's in the top of the funnel and bring them to your site and presenting your company, often for the first time, to these people who might not have been aware of it at all. Um, the way you get those searchers, you have to do your keyword phrase research. A lot of times what you want to look for are the long tail keyword phrases. So those are the keyword phrases that have, you know, three, four, five or more words in the search phrase. And there's not a ton of search volume necessarily for those phrases, but there's also not a lot of competition either. So meaning that if you write a well-written blog post around that particular keyword phrase, you stand a chance of ranking well in the search engine results over time. It's not going to happen overnight necessarily. It might, but more than likely it's going to take some time to do. Blogging is very much a long game. Like you're going to want to do your keyword raise keyword phrase research, you're going to want to create an editorial calendar, you're going to want to write great content that takes some time and thought, get it out there. Um, but over time, like let's say over the course of six months or a year, you put out 10, 20, 30, 40 great blog posts that are highly optimized around keyword phrases relevant to your business, you're going to be bringing in that traffic to your site, prospective people who are in the top of the sales funnel, or maybe they're just doing research. Not everyone is going to turn into a customer, but you're doing all the right things. You're getting your name out there, so you're building awareness and exposure. Some of those people will convert on smaller points, whether it's like a social media, they'll be, follow you on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, they might sign up for your newsletter, they might download a piece of content, so now you're really on their radar. And some of them might end up being customers at some point down the line. Um, it's a long game. It's a definite long game. So blogging, a long game, you're trying to capture some of that top of the funnel traffic. Yes, blogs can also be used f successfully for people in the middle and bottom of the funnel, but mostly it's a top of the funnel tactic, I find, when it's most effective. An email marketing newsletter is newsy. Like you're reaching out to people who are already familiar with your company and keeping them informed, sharing the news because they want to be there, they're interested in your company for whatever reason. Um, and that's kind of like the lay of the land for the two different types, the two different marketing tactics of email newsletter versus blogging. So what should you do? So what, what am I counseling my client to do? Basically, I just gave her that explanation. <laughs> I, I, I explained it in writing. Um, I, I think for them, an email marketing newsletter is a great place to start. They are a small company. They're very niche. They don't have a ton of time. They don't have a huge budget. They just did the the website. So I think an email marketing newsletter is the is a good next step. Let's start building momentum with that and getting in a regular cadence of sending that out. And they're going to have an email newsletter sign up on the site. So hopefully we'll be able to get some of the people who do go to the site just through organic search or through referral search or even direct search. People can sign up there. I think blogging could be a good tactic over time if they decide they want to try to get more traffic to the site and possibly some leads. Um, because they're such a specific niche industry, I, I think it's the type of thing where I would want them to probably take the first pass at the content. Um, it'd probably be much more budget friendly for them as well. 
rather than having you just try to write it. That's the thing too. With blogging, and I say this so often to, to my clients, like businesses here, oh, um, we need to blog, we need to blog. You got to put out quality stuff. You don't want to put out crap. There's just too much crap out there. And the only way to really do quality stuff, yes, you have to have something that's well-written and I can do the well right, the well-written part. I can always talk well, but I can do the well-written part. But I'm not an expert in your business. And I can do research, of course, and kind of fudge it, and you can review it and stuff like that. But the real magic happens when someone is participating on the business side, that subject matter expert. And they really get into it. It's not just like answering a few questions or giving a few lines. Like they really get into it and they really show their point of view or their approach or whatever so that no one can find another blog post that's just like that on, a, on another site. Like it really is a very distinctive point of view and has really good information, helpful information, but just a little bit different of a slant than you find anywhere else. So you got to think about that. And that's not easy to do. And it does cost money. It takes time. So I, I think for my client, for where they are right now, email marketing newsletter makes sense. Blogging, maybe build that up over time where, you know, people, they, there are a couple of principals in the company. Maybe if they each kind of like do a blog post a month, see how that goes at some point, but not right away. But that's my take on email newsletters versus blogging. What's your take? And again, now it's just for one client. I, my, my suggestion to another client might be different. might be the opposite. might be like, you know what? Blogging actually makes a lot of sense for your industry. Let's hold off on the email newsletter. So it depends. It's a case by case. Um, there's no one right answer. No one size fits all. I mean, is there really anything? Is there one size fits all anywhere in life? I don't know. But certainly not in this case. But that's my take. I just wanted to touch on it. Email newsletters versus blogging. What do you think? Do you have a different take? That's okay. Share in the comments. I'd love to hear. And of course, if you have a question about copywriting or running a copywriting business or content marketing or anything along those lines, hit me up. I am Robin the Copy Bitch. I've been doing this since 2002. This is Stewie, my sidekick slaw. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, just move along. And we will see you next time. Right, Stewie?